I started taking pictures, or as we say now, making pictures when I was in my teens. And initially, I think I was using the camera as a device to separate me from the world. And I realized that when I'd look at the pictures that I'd taken in that mode, I did not like them. I really wanted uh, more a feeling of I intimacy and connection, but I was afraid. And over the years, I taught myself to get closer, to open myself up. But when it got here, I think I reverted to that mindset, that the camera would, would, would be my buffer between my heart and this tragedy that, that, that I was immersed in. We are now in Evergreen Cemetery, and this is a 60-acre burial ground. Right next door is East End Cemetery. They are separate spaces, and yet the same community is buried here. African Americans, Freedom's first generation. My wife and I have been volunteering as cemetery restorers removing invasive species and finding headstones that have been buried under dirt for years and years, decades in fact. We've focused a lot on clearing the areas that you can see, see from the road, obviously, and then pushing back and pushing in. And we've also responded to relatives who have come to us and said, can you tell us where our grandmother, our grandfather's grave is? And if we can't, we'll try and figure out where they are and do what we can to clear that space. I would hear people say sometimes, it's a shame the state that this place is in. The subtext there was, these Negroes can't take care of their stuff. If you know the history, if you know anything about Jim Crow, if you know anything about how funding worked in the state of Virginia with the equivalent of about $9 million going to fund Confederate cemeteries, and if you figure out how much money went to African American cemeteries, state money, it was about, oh, zero. These places fell into disrepair. Churches, burial associations, they just couldn't keep up. So we had public investment in private spaces, private Confederate cemeteries, which we still have, and we had no investment in these private spaces. That's kind of political, but um, it's real. And it's, it's something that I think about a lot when I come out here. I don't think my pictures got real and interesting until I got close to this powerful history. And that's when I started slowing down. I experimented with slow shutter speeds, faster shutter speeds. Instead of obstruct with the camera, use the camera to capture stuff that I saw only when I slowed down. There was a part of Evergreen that would periodically become overgrown with kudzu. And then people would clear it out and then the kudzu would come back. And that was, to me, terrifying because the kudzu hadn't and still hasn't reached East End. But I thought, what, whatever can we do to stop this? That particular picture was on a day kind of like this, so a little bit murky. And I think that's where you get those greens that, that, that really kind of pop out. These 16 acres in particular have held my interest for so long. Whatever political environment we're in, I understand now what it means for me to be American, to be connected to these people here. No one can tell me that I need to go here or go there or go home or go back to Africa. Mm -mm. This is mine. And you cannot dismiss the experiences of my my ancestors who tried to carve something out of this country for themselves and for others, and they did. You can't erase that.